Hi everyone, welcome to Miss Adams Teaches The Great Gatsby. In this very short video, I'm gonna be introducing you to some of the key themes and contextual factors of the novel by looking at the dedication and the epigraph that introduces the book. So let's get started. The Great Gatsby opens with a dedication to Fitzgerald's wife. He begins once again, to Zelda, telling us that this is not the first book that has been inspired by this woman who he loved so intensely. I want to talk to you a tiny bit about their relationship now, just to give you a little bit of focus on AO3 on context, um, which no doubt will help you with your study of the novel as a whole. So they met when she was about 18 years old and he was sort of 21, 22. She was a southern belle, a little bit like Daisy, and her family had expectations about who she should marry. Um, and it was felt that Fitzgerald was perhaps a little inferior uh, when it came to his status in society, just as a writer. In fact, despite how much they clearly loved each other from the you know, from the very get go, when he asked her to marry him, she actually turned him down. Her mother was putting a lot of pressure on her, um, particularly because he was, in her eyes, just a writer. Things changed somewhat when he had his first book published. And it was soon after that that they did actually get married and they were flung into this sort of society lifestyle. They gained celebrity incredibly quickly. And part of that celebrity meant that they were always living somewhat outside of their means. So despite moving in the right circles, they had some of the same issues that characters in The Great Gatsby have in relation to perceptions of new money versus old money. And quite simply, whether or not whether or not there was enough money after Fitzgerald's initial successes with his writing. The Great Gatsby, which was his third book, was actually commercially quite a failure and he found himself in quite a pickle financially. They were still trying to kind of live this lifestyle and it meant that Fitzgerald had to start writing short stories and doing work that he didn't really want to, that wasn't sort of satisfying and, and, and stopped him from working on the kind of bigger projects. So despite their love for each other, their marriage was was plagued uh, with difficulties. Um, like I said before, difficulties with mental health, with adultery, uh, with alcoholism. Um, it certainly wasn't an easy, easy life. And they certainly spent a long time pursuing wealth and status. Sound familiar? The second point of interest in the way that this novel is introduced is in the epigraph that comes immediately after the dedication. Um, an epigraph is a short quotation that is used at the very beginning of a text, uh, normally something quite memorable or well known. Um, and it has a function that it tends to introduce some of the key ideas. And this is how Fitzgerald uh, chose to start his. Then wear the gold hat if that will move her. If you can bounce high, bounce for her too, till she cry, lover, gold hatted, high bouncing lover, I must have you, by Thomas Park and Danvilliers. Okay, what an interesting epigraph to use. Let's start by talking about this metaphor of the gold hat. This is to do with identity, about presenting yourself in a certain way. Obviously, the gold hat is a metaphor for wealth and materialism. Note the way that the opening line of this verse of poetry appears to be an instruction, then wear the gold hat. And note as well the way that we're starting here with this conjunction, then, then wear the gold hat. Sort of almost on media res, you know, in the middle of something like this is part of a conversation where a person is giving some advice. Wear the gold hat where your status, where your wealth, if that will move her. So this is obviously advice being given in order to woo a young woman. And in this case, a gold hat seems to be the way, i.e. money. If you can bounce high, bounce for her too. So Wearing the gold hat, wearing your money as your identity, 
bounce high. Another metaphor for status, bounce high, bounce for her too. Show her what you can provide, okay, in terms of status. Till she cry, and then we've got this dialogue. Lover, gold-hatted, high-bouncing lover, I must have you. So the intention here is for the woman to become the prize, for the woman to so desperately want the man that it's almost inevitable. Note the modal verb, I must have you. But the assumption here is that the, 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 the reasons behind this love is money and status and wealth. Um, Thomas Park de Villiers, well, who is he? So who is Gatsby quoting? Because Gatsby is quoting someone who seems to be saying the way to a woman's heart is wealth and status. Doesn't sound wildly romantic, does it? Nor does the idea of being a bouncing gold hatted lover sound wildly appealing. It's quite ridiculous, in fact. Well, guess what? Thomas Park and Villiers does not exist. He is a fictional character. In fact, he comes from, he's a minor character in Fitzgerald's first book, This Side of Paradise. He plays a poet in that book. So actually what Fitzgerald is doing is pointing out the falsity of these kinds of desires and these kinds of dreams. They're not real. People shouldn't aspire. It is ridiculous. But we're also being reminded of perhaps his relationship with Zelda. You know, it is clear that at the very beginning she said no to him because he wasn't wealthy enough. He didn't have enough status. And then they lived their life with Fitzgerald, essentially wearing the gold hat, trying to, excuse the modern phrase, keep up with the Joneses. So it is quite fitting to their life. And it's not just a representation of their life, it's a representation of the novel itself and the key themes of it. Identity is such a massive part of this novel, the idea that characters can create, can fashion their own senses of identity. Um, this instruction being given is almost like you can imagine that Gatsby himself was given this advice, wear the gold hat. Yeah, wear the gold hat and bounce high. It's about love or about the quest, I suppose, for love. Because this advice, again, it's about how do you get the woman? How do you, how do you conquer love? Is it good advice? No, it's not. So is it also about falsity? It's certainly about status and wealth, symbols of status and wealth. Look at Gatsby's house described to us in chap chapter one. What is that if not a gold hat? But ultimately, there is a sense that this is all ridiculous, that this is all absurd, that it's all made up. Which is perhaps a comment on Gatsby and his dream and his dream for Daisy. Is it absurd? Is it full of falsity? Is it just made up? That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching this uh, opening bit of analysis. This is the first video in a sequence of Gatsby chapter analyses. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, then please do so. Um, and so you will see when our chapter one analysis is ready and uploaded. Uh, if you are studying this in school or just want to just have a little read of it, there's also a playlist with uh, chapter readings, chapter by chapter, with very, very brief commentaries. So you can always just listen and read along to it as well. Thanks so much again. Happy revising.